I am a suit and tie type of guy. In general. But what I mean specifically is for men behind the pulpit of churches. Now I'm going to say a whole bunch of stuff right here. And the goal is always to help and to glorify the God of heaven. But that's going to make a lot of you mad. Because in this so-called Christian world, and of all the groups, religions, denominations that call themselves Christian, they simply are not. So you have to decide right now whether you're going to listen to this with an open mind, and not as a liberal who believes we're supposed to have an open mind about everything except conservative Christianity. And have an open mind by not letting your flesh and the devil shut it because you don't want to hear something that goes against what you are practicing or believe. And be open-minded to where you're going to do things God's way, no matter how it hurts, no matter what it tells you to do, that you believe because of your experience that this is the right way to do it. And go to and I'm gonna to say to hell with your experience and let's do it God's way. So I started off saying suit and tie. And I'm I'm thinking about branding myself that way every way every time I do a video to at least be in a collared shirt without a hat, combed hair, or a suit and tie, or at least a tie, because I want to represent the God of heaven and be an example of what men that have been truly called to preach God's word and represent that well. Because I'm telling you that most of what is being called Christian today and contemporary Christianity is straight from the pits of hell. Now, I believe that you might be sincere and that there are many sincere believers in those groups that don't know any better and they don't understand all that's truly going on and in their heart, they're worshiping. But when it comes down to it, it is a fleshly and a soulish worship because it nothing but makes you feel good and it's like you can't worship unless you have that kind of fleshly soulish worldly music see true worship is a way of life and you can worship God in the silence and you can worship him with the right Kind of melodious music that he describes in his Bible. Not this rock and roll, worldly, praise and worship so called, that is worldly. And it is satanic. Now you might feel good, but it is satanic. And if you don't realize that, you're proving that you are not in the book. You are not in the book. You're not in it. It's not your life. God is not your life. He might be a part of your life, but he is not your life. And I'm going to take it further. You're not into King James. Anything other than King James is satanic. There's a whole lot of history, scientific data that proves that. But it's a matter of faith. God told us that he was going to inspire and preserve his word. If the King James was ever God's word, then it is still God's word. And all these other translations so-called is a lie. It's a lie. 
But if you cannot sense that evil and wickedness in those contemporary service worships, then you're not in the book. Because he will guide you if you make his word your life. If you make it a part of your daily life, a substantial part of your daily life. If you study it, meditate, uh, memorize it. And I'm still weak on memorizing, but I do spend much time in the Word, listen to it audibly, reading it, studying it, taking notes, writing things down. God is not a part of my life. He is my life. I make a lot of mistakes. I'm suffering right now because of a lot of past mistakes, but they're under the blood. And I have been forgiven because I've confessed and I've repented. But let's go back to my first thought. I believe in a suit and tie look for God's men, not women, preachers behind pulpit. And like I already said, a lot of what is called Christian today is not. A lot of what is called a church is not. God said his church would always be on the earth. It would never be part of the Protestants and come out of the Protestant Reformation, come out of the Catholic Church. That's what the Protestant Reformation is. God has always had hundreds if not thousands of local churches that can trace their lineage back to the time of Christ. His true church has never left the planet and we did not come out of the Protestant Reformation. Hmm. Back to the suit and tie thought. Representatives of God in here and throughout history. God has always had a dress code for his men in ministry. It's always been modest. It's always been a step or two above the look of the normal mass populace and it was significant of the role and the position the minister held. The high priest and the regular priest and the Levites had a dress code, a priestly dress code that represented the office. So in our day and age, the best representation of the dignity of that office is shown in a suit and tie. With a good, sharp look, good short haircut, and that's relative. But once you start getting lower than the ears, long. God has always had a look for his men in general. Jesus did not have long hair and he's always had a look for his ministers. So that's why I'm debating about every time I make my videos to be in more of a conservative, manly, masculine look. Because I also know we have work to do. We have jobs to do. We do not walk around in suits and ties all the time. Okay, I'm here at the church today. I don't have any physical jobs to go do. All right? But I'm working on plumbing issues with the church. I'm having my personal Bible study and time with the Lord. I've already taken a class today for Bible study from one of my coaches. Then we're moving forward. And so when I have days like this, I try to create content that's profitable. And I'll admit, part of why I don't do it is because it takes extra effort on my part to get all dolled up, get my hair combed, put a nice shirt on. I was already had my casual clothes on for the day, 
and I believe God's men, they need to be representative, representative of being approachable and somewhat easygoing. We don't condone sin. We don't curtail sin. We don't dip our colors. We don't push things under the rug. And we don't always have to be in a suit and tie, but we are straightforward. We say the hard things in love. It upsets people. No matter how lovingly we say it, just the fact that we speak truth is going to upset people. And sometimes people are intimidated in a personal setting being in a suit and tie. But God's men has always had a look. And it's always been a step or two above, even in their daily walk. Because God wants his people, as a whole, to look different than the world. And we live in a day and age where so-called Christianity does not look any different than the world. It doesn't. Now, I don't go to these types of churches, but I've been to special meetings and different things where... I have to divert my eyes because I'm a man and I like the bodies of women. Yeah. And I'm attracted to their butts and I'm attracted to their cleavage. I'm a boob man. And when you women dress in such a way that the world says is okay and you wear tight clothing that reveals your body shape that is anti-Bible. That is worldly. You just need to admit it and quit doing it. When you wear low-cut clothes, shirts that show your cleavage, you're wrong. Mini skirts. God has always had a look for his women. Long, flowing garments, two layered, that flow between the knee and the ankle. That's God's word. Hmm. Now I love you, and it's true, and I'm not ranting and raving, but I'll get sometimes, I'll rant and rave about this, but you don't want to receive it because you don't like it. So why don't you examine yourself? Examine the church you go to, examine the music. And just be honest, am I, am, I, am I go here because I like the music because it appeals to my flesh? Are you the type of person, oh, I can't worship God with those old hymns? Well, then there's something wrong in your heart. If you cannot enjoy the old hymns, there is something wrong in your heart. I'm not saying that all new stuff is bad, but I'm saying a bunch of it is. Most of it is. Do you dress the way that you dress to please God? Or to please man. If you're a preacher and you're behind the pulpit and all you wear are tight ripped jeans and a t-shirt or whatever hip look you think because that's what the world wants to see because you've convinced yourself in your humanism that this is what you have to do to get people to come to church and you forget the fact that God is in charge. God has laid down the law. God does not need your humanistic thought process. And the church is not for unbelievers. And for every verse that you want to claim you're using to get people saved, I'll give you ten verses that show God wants you to be holy. See, we're supposed to do it God's way. We quit coming up with our own human philosophy. Because we are in a mess today. A lot of those so-called contemporary churches and these new churches are accepting all the sexual promiscuity, the transgender, homosexual, sodomy lifestyle as acceptable. And you can still be a Christian and be that way, and you can still be a minister and be that way, and you cannot. My calling is to get people to true truly look at the God of heaven, at the God of the Bible, and quit inserting your beliefs into it and do it the way God wants you to do it and quit relying on your experiences. Keep your eyes on Him.